where they say they were promised housing, work, and of course, pay for that work. But they say when they didn't get paid, they knew something was wrong. We were able to sit down with several of the folks in this situation. Now we aren't showing their faces for safety reasons, and as they only speak Mandarin Chinese, we communicated with them through a translator. He feels sad because he worked hard and then he did not um, receive what he was promised. 13 men living in a typical Savannah suburb say they've been working 13 hour days, seven days a week with nothing to show for it. The men say they came to the United States from China because they were promised the American dream. So the, the, what they promised him is that um, work, work, of course, um, $18 per hour Then they're going to pay for the airline ticket, provide the um, housing, and also that um, uh, trans transport you know, in and from the house to work. And then they were paying him cash. And he, feel, he thought that this is a good opportunity, so he came. When they arrived, they say what they found is a nightmare. After a 45-day journey to get to the United States. From China get over here, he went through nine different countries, got to the United States. The men say they worked for a month at a warehouse, loading and unloading trucks and separating products. They say they haven't seen a dime. Yeah, basically they work for free, you know, and then um, non-stop working. It's possible that they're involved in the human trafficking. On April 9th, the men contacted the Savannah Police Department because they realized something wasn't right. The report states that the men were working for e-green transportation, loading and unloading trucks and separating products, and that the men were collectively owed around $110,000. We reached out to the company last week but have not heard back. The report also states, they showed me several sheets containing days worked and trucks that they unloaded. All of the workers stated that they haven't been paid, have very little to no food, and rent is due. Days later, on April 12th, another report was filed with SPD, this time referring to the situation as human trafficking. At this point, the men say they had stopped working, so they had no money, and the company was no longer giving them food. So they went to their neighbor for help, explaining their situation through a translation app. I said to my wife, I go, we got to help them. You know, we a friend said to me one day, I was talking in a certain way, and he said, hey, we're all God's children. And now that they're here, they're here. So, you know, human to human, you know, you got to help people. Johnson has been giving them food when possible and rallied other neighbors to do the same. He says he's heard of situations like this, but never thought it would happen here. They actually have them living right next door. And for them to tell the story, I was absolutely blown away. As we were interviewing the men, their landlord informed them that they have to leave the house in less than a week because they can't pay rent. They don't know where they'll go next. He feel like um, this is incorrect, especially in the United States, that there's uh, it's a country of law, that um, you know, this thing shouldn't happen. The Savannah Police Department tells WTOC that the case is now being handled by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, but the GBI tells us it's not their case. The men have been in contact with some humanitarian groups for legal help, but they tell us the process could be lengthy and there's no guarantee that they'll ever get their money as they are undocumented. After speaking to the men, we wanted to know just how common this situation is in coastal Georgia, so we sat down with some experts to get that answer. That's coming up on The News at Six.